Tales from the Norse Legends. The creation of the universe. In the beginning was Ginungagap, the great emptiness, the unending void. It was a region so vast that it went on in all directions forever, with room for a billion universes. There was no up nor down in Ginungagap, no light, no darkness, no north, south, east, nor west. There was no sound in Ginungagap, yet no silence either, only endless space. No one knows the secret of creation how something could be formed out of nothing. But millions of eons before our universe existed, two distinct regions came into being, two completely different worlds, the lands of fire and ice. The land of fire was called Muspelheim, which means the home of the destroyers of the world, and it was a truly terrible place. There was nothing in Muspelheim except black, burning rocks, continually erupting volcanoes, molten lava, and a sky permanently filled with black, choking smoke. Howling winds blew clouds of flame and showers of sparks through the smoky sky. Volcanic dust covered everything, and great sheets of flame burst sporadically from the burning ground which was continuously cracking and splitting. Nothing lived in Muspelheim at first, except for one being, the dreaded Surt, the fire demon, whose dwelling place was in its very centre. Surt was the first being, and would spend eons forging his doomsday weapon, the great fire sword that it was his destiny to wield, come Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods, when he would burst forth out of Muspelheim to lay waste the universe. The other region, Niflheim was a very different place to Muspelheim. While equally vast and desolate, it was cold and frozen, a land of ice and snow where Muspelheim was all roaring fires and heat. The winds of Niflheim never ceased blowing, and they blew great torrents of freezing rain and hail across endless snowfields. Huge glaciers, mountains of snow and ice, cracked and split the frozen earth. The rivers and seas of the universe had their origin in Niflheim, flowing out of Virgilmere, the primal river, which was also known as the Roaring Cauldron, or else they stemmed from the freezing depths of Elivagar, the primal spring that filled the seas of Niflheim, its dark, cold waters spilling out and filling up the northern parts. The waters of Niflheim, its rivers and seas, were incredibly dangerous, Mountainous icebergs, whirlpools, great frozen cliffs that opened and closed like the jaws of some massive beast. The waters of this icy wilderness were anything but pure, however, for Elivagar was polluted by numerous streams of vile black poison that flowed into its waters, corrupting them and forming black ice when it reached the surface. This taint in the fabric of Niflheim would have dire consequences in time, and it spread throughout the entire northern part of Ginungagap. As eons passed and the lands of fire and ice continued to spread across Ginungagap, they eventually came into contact with each other. When the hot fires of Muspelheim came in contact with the cold air of Niflheim, an awesome phenomenon took place. The collision of fire and ice caused a huge explosion, sending millions of tons of water flying into the air to rain down all along the breadth of Ginung Gap, where the lands of fire and ice had met. As the freezing waters of Niflheim fell, where they mixed with the ash and clay of Muspelheim, they formed the body of a giant. Now when life sprang forth in Ginung Gap, it did not happen in a matter of minutes. In fact, the giant lay prone and unconscious for many eons, unfeeling and unmoving. His name was Orglmir, although his offspring called him Ymir, and he was the first of the mountain giants. 
For eons, Ymir lay sleeping, and the various elements that he was composed of mixed and melded, the water and snow, the ice and clay, the cinder and ash, the hot smoke and the freezing air, and the poison waters of a livergar. After a long time, his body solidified, and he began to sweat. From beneath his left armpit, a male and a female were born, and soon after, his right foot mated with his left, and he gave birth to a six-headed giant son. These first creatures were to found the races of the ice and mountain giants. Elsewhere in Ganungagap, another being had been born, following the merging of fire and ice. This being was an enormous cow called Adumla. Now Adumla was formed at the same time as Ymir, but none of the poison of Elivigar had gone into her creation, for she was formed from the pure ice and the fire of Muspelheim. Since no grass or trees existed, Adumla had nothing to eat, so she fed herself by licking the ice, and as she fed, four great streams of milk flowed from her udders, feeding the giant Ymir. Then something very strange happened. As Adumla licked away at the ice, and night began to fall at the end of the first day, she uncovered the hair of a man. Throughout the whole next day, Adumla licked and sucked away into the ice, until the man's head and shoulders were uncovered. On the third day, a complete being stood uncovered, naked and beautiful on the ice, huge and powerful and awesome to look upon. This was Buri, the father of the gods. Buri gave birth to a son called Bor, who married Bestla, the daughter of a giant called Balethorn. In time, Bor and Bestla had children, three sons, who were called Vili, Ve, and Odin.